This video is an experiment. I want to see if you like it and I can do more. We're going to talk about orchestration. So kind of like five orchestration hacks. There are two or three reasons why I'm doing this video. First, I'm just trying to find the things that you would enjoy the most, the things that would serve you the most. So let me know in the comments if you like this type of videos, we'll do more. Second, because it's my passion. I can do a lot of that, but orchestration is my passion. Just love it. Let's talk about it. And third, I've got a few notes. I'm looking... Since we are talking about film music a lot of times and music for media, directors, producers and audiences in general are very open to what we call color, what regular people refer as timbre. Melody is a more complex animal to talk about. Let's put it this way, it's more nuanced to effectively make it properly work in a movie or media. So we are not gonna talk about melody. Harmony is also something that's gonna affect the musical emotional component when doing music for media but generally it's not going to be as noticeable as color now don't go below in the comments and hate me for that yes major chords are very different than a minor chord minish chord and all these things are going to have a big big effect yes but not as much as color meaning orchestration, timbre. Audiences are way more open to be affected by a change of color. So if, for example, if we've got the strings and all of a sudden we've got an oboe coming in or a voice coming in, they are going to know this. And this is why we are doing this video and I can do so many more. I hope that you like this video. Please let me know in the comments because basically we're gonna talk about orchestration, but the reason why we talk about orchestration is because it's one of the most important things when it comes to music and especially music for media because it has such a big effect and uh, let's go now before we move forward let's zoom in just one more time it's serious here but we're gonna talk about real orchestration syncestration what we do there it's kind of like um, as uh, Bruce Broughton calls it quasi orchestration it's not better or worse just understand that it's different so today we're gonna have to be talking about real orchestration techniques that will for sure serve you if you are working with an orchestra and it will also be super super useful if you are orchestrating in the box or syncestrating in the box now the one most important recommendation that I would give you is if you want to learn these these five hacks or I don't know how many hacks how many hacks I think it's five the real two ways of the orchestra let me see five orchestration hacks plus one bonus now again as I was saying what I would recommend is for you to truly learn orchestration go listen to real orchestras I'm not even saying a live orchestra perform that would be the best case scenario but I'm just saying real musicians there's nothing wrong with what we do here it's just different sample library is a simplification of the real instrument a sample clarinet it's a simplification of what a clarinet can actually do a musician can actually do and with that transfer we've got a lot of expressivity that we try to re-inject when we, when we perform, but it's not the same. So go listen to real musicians, real music, because orchestration, what it is at the end of the day, it's memorization of memorization of sound. All right, that's what I wanted to say. Let's get started. All right, so the five orchestration hacks. I'm gonna go from five to one, because I've been advised that I should go the other way. Let's start it. The number five, there are actually just two real based instruments in the orchestra. We've got low instruments, we've got real based instruments. Those are the tuba and the double basses section. There are no other instruments that can hold a lot of instruments on top. The woodwind sections, they have low instruments, like the bass clarinet, the bassoons, the contrabassoons, and they sound low, but they cannot support the orchestra and you cannot put a lot of instruments on top. The tuba is an instrument that can carry a lot of weight. The double bass or double bass section is an instrument or a section that can carry a lot of weight. If you truly want a full sound and you don't have those instruments, you're not gonna have all the support that you need. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to use them all the time. In fact, the absence of them is gonna create a different sound, different different color, different feeling that most of the times you want because it's the contrast that you need it. And obviously we can replace that with sub scenes and soup bombs and things like this. But when we are talking about orchestra, the pure like real orchestra without anything else added, those are the only two sections or the only two instruments that will hold the entire orchestra. And by the way, the trombones or the bass trombones or the tin basses for that matter, like the same thing as the bassoons, contrabassoons, they sound low, but they don't have the bass power 
Cool, let's move on. Hack number four, bright and mellow sounds. I love this one. There's always in each section a group of instruments that will sound brighter and a group of instruments that will sound mellow. I call them like the singers and the blenders. <laughs> so think about it, for example, in the woodwind section, we've got the bright instruments, right? Like the double rings, the oboe, English horns, the bassoons. And then we've got the mellow instruments, the clarinets and flutes. Same thing happens in the brass sections. We've got the bright instruments. We've got the trumpets and trombones. We've got the mellow instruments, like the horns. We'll talk about the strings in a second because that applies as well it's not as dramatic the effect but it applies as well but generally we're gonna use the bright instruments to perform melodies and we're gonna use the mellow instruments to perform background because the melody is supposed to stand out and bright instruments will stand out and the accompaniment or the background stuff it's supposed to be in the background really really so mellower sounds or darker sounds are gonna naturally stay in that second layer or that background layer. Now, the reason why I said there are the singers and the blenders, the brighter and the mellow, it's because, yes, these are great for singing melodies. These are great for background material and also to blend sections together, to connect sections together, right? For example, we've got brass and the strings and we've got some musical material that's in common with, let's say, horns and violas. That is going to connect the two sections together. Now, this leads me to hack number five, four, three. Let's talk about writing in octaves just for a second. And by the way, if you like this video, comment down below and next time I can go a little bit more in depth. I can show what I'm saying in the piano. But again, this is, just, this is an experiment. It's just a test. If you like this video, let me know. We can do better videos with uh, different angles. I just wanted to record this one real quick. Let's go. So hack number three, how to write powerful statements or melodic statements in octaves. So sometimes when we've got a melody and we want to make it bigger or louder or, you know, add weight, sometimes we'll have the melody here and then we have the same melody down an octave. As opposed to having two sections playing in unison, you're going to have this section playing in the higher octave and the second section playing in the lower octave. I think it makes sense at this point. So let's develop this concept just for a second. So the same concept where we have have said that there are bright instruments and metal instruments within each instrument depending on the register or the tessitura of the instrument, meaning if the instrument is playing the lower notes or the higher notes, or is using a low string, for example, for the violins or a high string, or if it's playing in the kind of low register, the clarinet or the high register of the clarinet, it's going to sound very different. It's going to sound very different, almost like two different instruments like the clarinet in the high register is completely different instrument than the clarinet in the low register. Not as much in an oboe, but it's still timbrically sounds very different depending on the tessitura, the range of the instrument. Oh, there's so much that we could talk about here. I just love this. I'll try to keep it as short, concise and as this is the hack as possible. But let me just give you a little bit of context. Let's start with clarinets, for example. And I know that we are talking more about the strings today, but it'll help me bring this home to you. Because the clarinet has so many overtones. If we've got a melody with a clarinet and we're like, I want to make this melody sound bigger, I'm gonna have a second clarinet, not in unison, but in octaves. Because what's gonna happen is the complete opposite of what you want. It's not going to sound necessarily bigger or louder or more weight. You're actually going to weaken the sound a little bit because the clarinet here in this mid-high register, if you add a second clarinet in the mid-low register because it has so many overtones, it's gonna actually conflict with the higher clarinet. The same thing happens with the trumpet. So if we've got two trumpets performing a melodic statement, sort of in this range here, right? We've got the high trumpet in this F note. We all know how a trumpet sounds in that range. It sounds very loud, it sounds very bright. <laughs> Now, we have a trumpet in this range. Some people will say that down here will sound weaker. It can actually sound as loud as a trumpet up here, if you know how to perform, but it's definitely going to sound down here way darker. Gonna weaken the sound, not weaken, because weak, sounds negative, it's not going to add weight to the sound, definitely. It may thicken the sound a little bit, but it's not going to add power to it. So what would it be a better solution, actually? So if you want power in a melody like this, what you're going to do, instead of having trumpet one, trumpet two here, you're gonna have trumpet one and trombone, because the trombone is essentially a trumpet down an octave. That's what a trombone is. So they are going to be playing in the same tessitura for each one of the instruments. They will share the same color and that will add power. And the same thing with the clarinet. If instead of having a clarinet here and the second clarinet down here, 
here and an octave, you're gonna have a clarinet here and the bass clarinet. Because if we've got a clarinet here and the bass clarinet here, it's the same tessitura for both instruments. And so now this leads me to strings, which is what I wanted to talk about. Before I can get there, I have to talk about the strings a little bit, meaning it's one of the strings. So let's talk about violins. It'll have four strings. G, D, A, E. Now, each string is very different color. The E string is gonna be way brighter. G string has a lot of weight darker. And so the D and A don't have the same projection power as the E string. And this is commonly known as the second violin problem in quartets. What's the second violin problem in quartets? It's like, well, generally the first violin will have all the melodies and the higher register will always be performing in that E string, which is brighter and has more projection power. The second violin sometimes also has important musical material, but it's lower in the range. And so it's always performing in these D and A notes. It's hard to project with those strings. So now if you want power in a melody with the strings performing in octaves, it's not that big of a deal. You can definitely 100% have the violins one and two performing in octaves. And it's actually not a problem because that violins two performing with these strings, which actually softens the sound of the violins one is not a bad thing because with violins, softening the sound creates that very typical violins section in octaves or two octaves so it's a very typical sound and we love it but if we want power you may want to consider having the violins one and violas because even though violas are generally the soft or the mellow section in the strings when performing in the highest string of the viola instrument will have more projection power so that's it and you can take this one step farther like if you've got two octaves and it's a very high register maybe you'll have the first violin section in that E string in the super high register and then you're gonna have the second violin is also in the E string because it's a high register and then we have the viola so two octaves violin one two violas both violins one and two are in the E string range one higher one lower but in the E string range and the viola is in the A string which is the highest string in the viola and it's also the one that projects the most anyway moving on hack number two it's very basic because it's worth mentioning because sometimes we make the mistake especially when we are orchestrating or orchestrating in the box, which is using too many strings layers. If you got violins one, two, viola, cello, and double bass, the more we divide the strings, the weaker it sounds in a real orchestra. With samples though, the more layers we add, generally it's either going to sound bigger, louder, or more colorful. We can do things like, I'm gonna use these strings and sample sound that sounds massive. On top of that, I'm gonna add a layer of violins one harmonics, and I also will add another layer of violins one as well, sustained with vibrato, and another one of sustained concertino with non vibrato and then down below I'm gonna use a sustained patch with violins 2 I'm gonna play a chord here which is like three layers of violins 2 and then I'm gonna have violins 2 again doing trills or tremolando I'm not gonna have violas because you know um, I just decided and then I'm gonna have the cellos doing a staccatos and again I'm gonna layer those staccatos with another library because I need a little bit more of weight and a little bit more aggression I like this library for aggression I like this library for size and uh, you need to calm down we do this things like it's not even that rare it's not wrong there's technical challenges that will arise when doing that which is basically frequency stacking with samples but there's nothing wrong with that we're sculpting sound we're creating sound we're building something we are arranging with samples just understand that this is not what we would do with a real orchestra and if you try to translate what you just did to perform it with a real orchestra it's going to sound so different because rule of thumb with a real orchestra the more you divide the strings the weaker the smaller it sounds the more unison and the less you divide the strings, the bigger it'll sound. This is a huge generalization, but it's like kind of like the German and the French type of orchestration. If you listen to Mahler, if you listen to Brahms, it's gonna be that bigger sound. It's more unison and less divided. And if we look at Ravel or Debussy, it's, like it's more divided type of sound, especially in the strings and hence the color. Probably the reason why La Mer sounds the way it sounds is because the way the strings are divided, the a two, the a three, sometimes even the a four, and then adding the woodwinds in there where the woodwinds are going to stand out more because when 
the more you divide the strings, the more you weaken the strings sound. And so when you add other instruments that wouldn't have as much weight and would not cut through the mix, would not stand out in the mix like woodwinds that generally don't have as much projection power, but because we divided the strings, now we can add the woodwinds and then all the color comes through. Just understand that, but also understand that if you want to replicate that type of sound, that weaker, smaller, more timbrically rich strings sounds, not better, or just different of the divided strings with samples, you will have to use a DBC patch or a smaller strings ensemble. If you just add more layers, that's not going to divide the sound, that's going to thicken the sound with samples, but with an orchestra, it would create a complete different effect. So they behave very differently, that's what I'm saying. With the brass though, and I'm, we're gonna talk about this in the next video if you want me to keep talking about these things, with brass though is the opposite, with a real orchestra. The more notes you've got, the bigger the sound. With the strings, the more notes, the more you divide, the weaker. With brass, the more notes, the more you divide, the stronger it sounds. That's with a real orchestra. All right, and hack number one, I love this one, I love this one. I knew about this concept and I used it multiple times and I actually use it in my template as well all the time but we did the masterclass in cinematic box with Conrad Pope like a year ago or so and he said it and I was like I know I know it and it's if you want for the horns to sound epic and big and cinematic and Hollywood type of like big horn sound first obviously lots of horns so 12 horns right but here's the hack add a solo trombone to the horns section and that's going to add that bite and that aggression and that size. It just makes so much sense, right? You have the horns and you want a big sound. So you've got 12 horns and they are performing in a range where they sound big and heroic. But the horns, as we said, are the mellow section of the brass section. Now, if you add trombones, to horns, then it's gonna sound like trombones and horns. We still want the predominant sound to be horns. So by adding one trombone, which is gonna be performing in this mid-high register, because the trombone's range is arguably slightly lower than the horns, huge generalization, but bear with me. By adding one trombone, that's gonna be performing in the kind of like, in a little bit of the higher range of the trombone, it's gonna do what we said earlier when we we're talking about the trumpet and trombone down an octave. It's gonna be the bright range of the trombone where it actually projects. So just one trombone, it's not going to overpower the 12 horns for sure, but we are going to hear a little bit of that added timbre that's a little bit more tense and bright, brassy and powerful. And on top of that, what we'll also do is open the sound within the sound a little bit because the horns sit in the orchestra a little bit in the back left. The trombones sit in the back right. And so it's gonna within the sound a little bit. It's gonna open the sound. It's gonna make it sound bigger. So that's it. And finally, what time is it? Ah! What? It's super late. Okay, uh, bonus. Remember what we said about what we are just talking about. Bright and mellow instruments. Which ones are the bright instruments in the string section? I don't know. You tell me. Violins and cellos. Quick synchestration tip for kind of like background or orchestral homophonic strings, kind of like homophonic chords changing the whole string section. If you try to write violins one, two, viola, cello, double bass and create those homophonic textures, generally it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult to make it sound or make it feel like a real orchestra performing at the same time because it's just different lines, you record different times. So a trick that's gonna make it super easy and super fast, efficient for you to recreate this type of textures and for them to sound Oh, so good. It's one record first the texture, the chords, with a strings and sample patch. And that's going to create that bass, that sound, and it's gonna feel like an entire strings orchestra performing at the same time. But it's going to sound like a strings and sample patch. Mm. Lacks definition and mm. width, and it sounds so generic. Now, I'm gonna include a short video at the end. You're gonna see me doing that in a minute. But now bear with me. Once you've got that strings and sample boring, but effective patch, recording with those chords, funny chords. Now on top of that layer, the bright instruments of the string section, which are violins and cello. So just like that, you've got the strings and cymbal pad, a layer violins one on top, layer the cellos in the mid low. If you want to enhance this even harder, you can record double basses just to add extra depth and to control the depth later on. And also it gives you flexibility if, if you were to mix this later on and check out how different it sounds. Now the 
layering. How amazing it sounds. You're gonna have the strings ensemble that creates that feel of strings ensemble, them all performing at the same time, in the same room, but then you're gonna add the violins one and the cellos, and that's going to open, the, it's gonna do so many things. It's gonna one, it's gonna within the sound, it's gonna open the sound. Second, it's gonna add definition. You're gonna all of a sudden, which you didn't hear in the strings ensemble part, you're gonna now be able to hear different layers, right? Because now you can hear, even though it's a monophonic chord, but now you can differentiate the important or the bright sections of the strings orchestra, which is the violins one in the high register, the cellos in the low register. I think we've got enough for now. This video has been an experiment. Let me know if you like it. If you like it, we can do more of this. If you cannot wait for the next video, I've got a present for you, a gift for you. We call it Mivgi, the most amazing free gift ever. It's free down below a link with more information like this, what libraries I use, my template, how to go from a sketch to orchestra, how to orchestrate, how to compose in different styles, how to compose for movies. Ah, days of content very well organized for you for free grab it down below thanks for watching thanks for your time i don't take your time for granted it means a lot to me i'll see you in the next video bye